Three years ago, we moved in among the Wantakia people and we started learning their language and culture. We spent the last three years going everywhere that the Wantakia go and doing everything that the Wantakia do, and now we can communicate with them. Well, from the very beginning, us three ladies said, we are going to learn the language. It's important for these ladies to be discipled in their own language. I want to be able to just sit with them and disciple them and just discuss God's word with them. Now we've created an alphabet for them and we're preparing the literacy course so we can teach them to read and write in their language. And our first literacy class is just right around the corner. And most excitingly of all, we've started the process of translating the Bible into the Wantakia language. We're not just coming to translate the Bible and then just give it to them and leave them. Uh, we also promise them that we're going to teach them God's Word. We're starting off translating the portions of scripture that we're going to be teaching from as we lay a clear foundation for the gospel. Yeah, so the three most important things in this translation is that it must be accurate, natural, and clear. The first part of the process is to make sure that we communicate accurately what God intended to communicate. We dig in, we look at all the helps, all the original languages, we're looking at all that. And then I actually come up with the first draft in the Wantakia language. When we talk about God's Word being natural in another language, it means that they ought to say, man, God knows my language. He speaks like I do. He's speaking to me. So because of that, after we do the first draft, we'll get together with one of the Wantakia guys and paragraph at a time, we'll read it to him. And then we ask them to tell it back to us in the way that they would say it. So after I have recorded it with someone, made those adjustments and make sure that it sounds natural, I take that out and I go around in the village. And a paragraph at a time, I'll read it to them. Our goal is to find out, does this communicate the first time around when they hear it? Sometimes they actually do scratch their heads. Or I can ask them a comprehension question and then I'll, if they can't answer it, then I'll know there's a problem here. So those portions we fix, but sometimes uh, after we go out and the first time we read it, they hear it and they say, wow, that really spoke to me. So one night when I was out comprehension checking with one of my friends in his house, I had just read him a paragraph of God's word for the first time, he'd never heard it before. And he stopped me right there, he grabbed my legs smiling and he said, Hey, that does not sound like you're reading. That sounds like a Wantakia man talking. So one of my good friends, Piox, he just looked up at this massive tree that was next to us and said, ah, God's word is like this massive tree. And when we hear it in the trade language, it's like we're just jumping around in these high branches up on top. But I just heard it in my own language and I heard the roots of God's talk. Why are we taking so much time to translate God's word in their language? But I'd love for you to ask that question to the men and women who are gonna be holding uh, God's word in their language. I mean, can you imagine not having the Bible in English? And then I think about the Wantakians and it just seems unfair that just because you're born in a jungle at the ends of the earth, that you don't get to have uh, the scripture in your language. We want them to love it and to hold on to it and to use it. So we want to say a huge thank you to everyone at the Blessed Foundation and everyone who's giving towards this translation project. We are so blessed to be in this together. It's God's church doing what God's church should be doing.